11. Swordfish is an annual event that takes place here in Sweden. It's devoted to the historical European martial arts, or what we call HEMA for short. This three-day event started in 2006 and consists of a series of workshops given by international instructors uh, presenting historical sword play and related martial arts. Uh, these historical martial arts are reconstructed from primary source material, such as medieval manuscripts and uh, old period fencing manuals in print. Over the years, Swordfish has developed into uh, one of the premier tournament, tournament events uh, on the international HEMA scene. And for this reason, we're very proud to bring you the finals of the 2011 uh, Swordfish tournaments. Scott? We'd like to thank our uh, sponsors who include Ensifer Swords from Poland, The Night Shop from the UK, PBT Historical Fencing from Hungary, Darkwood Armory from the United States, Spes Historical Fencing from Poland, Leon Paul from the UK, All Star Fencing from Germany, and Budo Fitness from Sweden. We have a stacked evening in front of us. Go through the fights. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the order of uh, events for this evening will be as follows. First, we will have the uh, Rapier and Dagger finals. Next, after that, we will have the Saber finals. After that, Sword and Buckler, followed by Women's Longsword, and finally, the finals for the Open Longsword. All weapons are fought with blunt steel. All events will begin with a bout for third place, followed by a bout for first place. Our referee for this evening, who will be governing the fight, He's the one in the center of the ring who will be carrying the staff. Will be Michael Wittegren uh, of Gothenburg, Sweden. He's a member of the Gothenburg Historical Fencing School. The judges will be Phil Marshall from the UK, Robert Moline from Sweden, Nathan Griparis from the United States, with an alternate judge, Reinier van Noort from the Netherlands. <clears throat> For the benefit of our viewers, uh, I will give a brief summary of the rules uh, that are being used for these tournaments. Each bout will consist of two three-minute rounds separated by a 30-second break. The winner will be the fencer who has accumulated the most points at the end of that time period. In case of a tie, uh, the fencers will fight for sudden death, meaning they will fight until one of them receives one point and that person will be the winner. Judges will distinguish between what we call clean hits, uh, which are blows struck on the opponent with no response, or one uh, next, there are double hits uh, where both fighters hit each other um, at the same time, uh, simultaneously or near simultaneously, which score nothing for either fighter. And also after blows, which uh, consist of return strikes uh, given within one of the opponent's hit. To yes. distinguish, uh, a double hit is simultaneous or near simultaneous, and after blow is separated by a single tempo. Fencers score points for the following techniques. For landing a cut, thrust, drawing cut on the opponent. Also, for delivering a pommel strike to the face, that is to the mask. Uh, also, grappling can score a point uh, if it is followed by a, uh, a show of dominance uh, over the opponent. Punches and kicks are allowed, but do not score. That is uh, pretty much a brief resume of the rules. There are some special rules. Yeah, Matt. That there are some special rules for sword and buckler we'll talk about later. You can see the crowd's getting pretty excited, and with that, I'll pass this over to Scott. Yeah, these guys are getting psyched. We'll have to go into the fighters in the ring now.
So, ladies and gentlemen, of course, we have our uh, pre-fight preparations. Our uh, referee is getting his staff. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a great deal of noise from the crowd. Somebody's starting the wave. Uh, it looks like it's going to be an entertaining evening here in Sweden. Michael Wittegren, our referee for this evening's events. The referees are now taking their place. Nathan Graparis of the United States, Phil Marshall of the UK, and Robert Moline of Sweden. Again, our first uh, event is right... So the match begins with our fencers shaking hands, retrieving their weapons, and retreating to their corners, putting on their gear. When the judge asks if everybody's ready and gets the positive singles, the match will begin. While we wait, Mika Keskatalo from Uppsala, Sweden, is the is an instructor at the Uppsala Historical Fencing School. Looks like we're about to begin. Our judges are using red and blue flags to indicate hits. They're instructed to look at the, at the ground and not at the other judges when they vote so that none of them can be influenced by the others. Nice.
Point so to Mika. Mika. And Mika Keskatalo, as I said, is an instructor at the Uppsala Historical Fencing School. 10 years of HEMA experience. His specialty is Bolognese side sword and German long sword. He's a first place winner in numerous local tournaments in Sweden. Nicole Smith, a fencer in red, is from Vancouver, Canada. She's an assistant instructor in rapier at Blood and Iron Martial Arts. Her primary focus is rapier, but she'll be fighting tonight in two tournaments, tournament finals, both rapier and longsword. Okay, they're going to call the winner now, Matt. No, I'm wrong. This is the actual break. They've done three minutes now, and they're going in for... A 30 second break. Nicole's talking to her coach. Okay, the fighters are back in the trenches. Get the focus in these fighters, Matt. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, look like a hit to the thigh.
from Sweden. Next, we're preparing for our uh, first place match. That was the third place. Again, won by Mika, Mika Keskatalo of Sweden, who was in the blue. Our next fight is for first place in rapier. Jernland is one of the founders of Arma Sweden. He is currently the s senior instructor in the Old Town Fencing School in Stockholm. He has about 12 years of HEMA experience, with his focus being uh, longsword, dusak, and rapier. He, he took first place during the rapier tournament in Appalern recently in 2010. Yeah, yeah, Matt. Both these guys are always in the top top avalanche of the of the tournaments, and they've fought on major platforms. Both of them, and they. Experienced, experienced tournament fighters. Dennis in blue. Dennis is the winner of the uh, Swordfish 2009 oh, Longsword Tournament, taking yeah. first place. Hans Jorlund takes the lead. Before Dennis started with him, he had a long experience as a kendo fighter. He fought for the national team for several years, I think, in, in kendo. That was a nice clean hit, Matt. Yeah. That, that was very nice. No exchange. Point. Ten seconds. Ten seconds left.
the bout is actually not over. We're just still taking a break. <laughs> you see how focused these guys are, Matt. They're really wanting to win this. And time. Okay, this is round two. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready? Round two ready? about to begin. Fight! Please. Judges! Off the blow on blue! Fight! Jean-Ling is asking for time out. There's something wrong with his blade. He's bending it out again. The fight, the fight continues. Swing and a miss. Dennis with a strike to the leg. And Jorlin gets the off the blow. That's a double A. Fight! Ten seconds! Ten seconds left in the fight. Time has been called. And it's the new champion of the rap here at Swordfish 2011. So, ladies and gentlemen, our next event is going to be Saber. And first of all, we will have the uh, third place competition. And this will be Ilka Hardikainen versus Jake Norwood. Ilka Hardikainen is uh, from Espoo, Finland. 
He is the head instructor of the ESPO Association for Historical Fencing. He has eight years of historical European martial arts behind him. His focus is Bolognese side sword, and his instructor was Guy Wenzer. From on, in the other corner, we have uh, from Baltimore, Maryland, in the USA, Jake Norwood, former, de former deputy director of ARMA, president of the HEMA Alliance, took first place in the uh, first Belgian historical longsword tournament at Festival America in Houston in 2011. Over to you, Scott. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a thunderous round of applause for Ilka, who uh, has a lot of supporters here from Finland. Yeah, as well, Matt. These guys are two legendary fans. One fans, one OT. Ilka is a beautiful fencer to watch. Uh, again, his specialty, Bolognese side sword. Very nice to watch. Jake, on the an other hand, very tough, aggressive fighter. USA in the blue. Ooh, nice pass. That was no, no exchange? Agreement. No agreement among the judges, so the fight continues. Takes the point. And a spark striking from the blade. Very nice to see. Oh, that was a nice counter nice from Jake's side, yes. So both guys, both guys feeling each other out, finding their tempo. We have an equipment issue, point red. slowing us down. I guess a tip came off, but the point is for red, for Ilka Hardy Cannon. At least tips on the point of the sword, so, so that the sword won't rush through the, the opponent's body. And they're just putting some more tape on there to make sure. Saw some very nice uh, slips and parries oh. by Ilka there over the last few exchanges. Yeah, they go again. Nice hanging parry by Ilka. Yeah, Matt, we're seeing some good fencing right now. A very, oh. very light blow there. Yeah, that was a by Jake. Point blue. But it gives him the point. But it gives him the point. Oh, nice parry. parry. That was beautiful. Hard sparks cuts. are flying, ladies and gentlemen. Sparks from the blade. Okay, they're taking time out. The Spirited punch. fighting. We've lost another point. I think we're going to see a lot of this. Inspecting the blades. These are two experienced fighters who pack a pretty powerful cut. Yeah, they're big guys. And they're going for the win, dude.
Both fighters so calm and collected. <clears throat> Ilka is not as big as Jake, but he really is an amazing physical specimen. I mean, he's, uh, he focuses on some of these rena renaissance uh, uh, physical uh, culture texts, and uh, it's amazing to see him work out, to do handstands and... Uh, very agile man. Great physical shape. Oh, it's also a great physical shape. This guy is a war veteran. He is, you're right, actually. He is a, uh, a combat veteran from Iraq. <laughs> yeah, while we wait, it is uh, uh, interesting to note uh, the, the first steel uh, traditional Belgian longsword tournament uh, was held at Festool America uh, earlier this year. And uh, Jake was actually the winner of that. The crowd's having a lot of fun. We've got a wave going on. And it looks like the fight is about to resume. Now the equipment issues are figured out. And here they go. Cut and slip. Oh. Looks like we had a blow to the leg, followed probably by an after blow. From the yeah, Elka got the after blow and blew. Back edge beat to the blade. Both guys feeling each other out. Oh. That looked like a hit on the hand too. From yeah. Jake to Elka. And then USA gets the point. Right, again, a series of cuts and voids, followed by a blow to the wrist. And here we oh, go again. Beautiful exchange. Beautiful Jake Curry. takes a point. Wow. By Jake Norwood. The crowd is going crazy. Ilka becoming more aggressive and then backing off somewhat. Jake is pushing Ilka against the end of the, of the ring. Oh, that's a tough one. Double hit. A double hit. Yeah. Tough one to call. Judge the double hit. Ten seconds left. Oh, the heat is on. Ow. And it's a double hit. So that's a 30 second break for the fighters. And then we'll resume for three more minutes of fighting. Lee Smith and Jake Norwood's corner. Oka stands alone. This is a great match, and this is the third place match. and Perry. Very calculated fighter. Yeah. Oh, and Jake beautiful hit. That was a beautiful hit. Beautiful cut <coughs> to the hip area, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Right across the belly. Belly cut by Jake Norwood. Jake in a hanging guard. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, beautiful cut again by Jake Norwood. Point for blue, Jake Norwood.
Diagonal downwards cut landed right across the chest. Jake again in the hanging guard. Jake seems to have found a weakness in Elka's yeah. defense. He's gotten in three times across with a cut across yeah. the chest. So as Elka raises his hands, the sword goes in under the under the arms, hits him on the chest. For me. That looked like a cut to the wrist to me. Oh, oh beautiful. Beautiful thrust by Elka. Absolutely a wonderful thrust by Elka. That was an aggressive attack. Very aggressive. Yeah, maybe he's feeling that Jake has taken the edge of him and he's trying to get some points back. Elka clearly realizes he needs to catch up, having lost those three points. Ten seconds left in the fight. Okay, the heat is on. Another. Oh! Looks like another blow to the chest by Jake Norwood. Uh, yet there was an after blow by Elka that negated it. Oh! <laughs> Dramatical ending to the third stage. Oh, we've got an injury. Yeah, he busted his head up. Elka not even realizing that the fight's over. He's taken off the ring. Okay, just to reassure everybody, that was an older injury. Jake did not hit him in the head this time. Winner by 8 to 1, Jake Norwood. Norwood takes a victory. And Jake Norwood won the bout. A convincing victory by Jake Norwood. Not entirely clear what happened at the end there. Uh, Ilka Hardikainen taking a fall. I got some more information on what happened about Ilka. It's actually an old wound that bust up again that he got before today, and then he did the, he did the rollover, and then he opened up an old wound. So that is our, uh, that was for third place. A very dramatic fight indeed. Very convincing victory by Jake Norwood. Now we move on to the first place uh, match. This should be a really, really good match. <clears throat> Andreas Engstrom in the red, the head saber instructor, instructor at the Gothenburg Historical Fencing School. His opponent, Hugo Schoberg, also an instructor at Gothenburg Historical Fencing School.
guys from the same club facing each other. Andreas is, uh, he is the Sable. He is the Sable instructor in the club. And I think Hugo has been training Sable for... I think he's been training Sabre for about five years. Uh, Andreas, uh, eight years in HEMA. Uh, his focus is Sabre. He is the head instructor for Sabre at the uh, Gothenburg School. He took first place in the Sabre tournament in Vienna, Austria in February 2011. Also took first place in the DUSAC uh, at Swordfish 2010 and has placed in several other tournaments as well. Andreas Engstrom in the red. Both fencers feeling each other out. A series of light cuts just to, to test the other's defenses. Mm. Looks like a step in and a cut to the arm by Schalberg. Yeah, and Engstrom gets off the glove. No, Hugo got the No exchange. Oh. They got him clean on the elbow. My Andreas Engstrom, that's good. Yeah, thrust is sometimes hard, sometimes hard to judge because you can't see them from an angle, so some of the judges will miss them. There's a no Slip by both. Both guys trying to find their range, finding their tempo. Here you go, putting the. And that looked like a cut to the wrist by Engstrom. Yes. Point for red, point for Engstrom with that cut on the wrist on the inside line. Schalberg returns the favor. Hey, Don. Thanks, Schalberg. Nice. Nice cut to the chest. Point for Engstrom. Hugo in blue and Stone in red. Hugo is not looking happy with his performance. He's giving him. Look, Hugo is giving Andreas a pretty good run for his money. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, frankly, I'm a little bit surprised. Andreas is a tough opponent, but Hugo is. He is also a monster, man. That guy. And we go again. Both fencers in an outside engagement. Cut and parry on the inside line. Again, cut and parry inside line. Looked like it was maybe a wrist cut. Or maybe even another Point. Wrist, wrist cut by Schalberg. Point blue. Schelberg has a pretty impressive defense. Been a great many cuts at the wrist by Engstrom. 
the majority of which have been parried Double by Xiaobo. Double hit. That looked like an looked like an arm One. cut to me, but the judges were unclear on what happened. Apparently. Ooh, nice knee. Judges. Double hit. We have a double hit. Fight. Everybody snaps the arm and gets the point. Oh, clean hit to the head. Sol solid cut by Engstrom. And he gets the point. Head cut. By Andrews Engstrom. Point red. That looked like a cut across the chest by Schubert. Everybody retaliates. Nice clean cut across the wrist, inside of the wrist. Thanks. Ten seconds. Ten seconds left into the fight. Oh, looked like a cut on the outside of the arm by Schoberg. But an after blow by Anderson. And that ends the match. And we have a tie, so now we go to sudden death. Avoided it. It was good. Uh, Schoberg closed in with a with a knee, not something you see often in uh, saber fencing. And it's had a pretty impressive defense. Both guys go at it. The crowd going crazy. Both sides look a lot more careful at this point, knowing that. Point. Point. And we have a cut by Blue on the outside of the arm. Blue Schoberg wins the fight. So, ladies and gentlemen, our next competition is going to be Sword and Buckler. And again, this is the third place fight. Um, in the blue corner, we have uh, Thomas Niluken 
Uh, he is from Bergen, Norway. He is the head instructor of the Free Duelists. He has seven years of experience in HEMA. His focus is sword and buckler fencing. It's interesting to note that uh, his student, uh, Christina Consmo, is actually fighting next after this bout for first place. So uh, in the other corner, in red, his opponent is uh, Masze uh, Zions, and he is from Warsaw, Poland. He is a junior instructor in Arma, Poland. His uh, primary focus is uh, German longsword and Messer. Uh, he recently took first place and second place in uh, a couple of longsword tournaments held in Warsaw, Poland. The rules for the sword and buckler are uh, slightly different from the other rules. Um, this is going to be a bout to five points. So the first fencer who reaches five points will win the match. And the time for the match is three minutes. The rules in this bout are also going to be a little, uh, there are a few other special rules that are different here. Uh, in this case, if uh, either fencer leaves the mat, uh, there's a one point penalty. If either fencer drops their weapon uh, unintentionally for any reason, whether it's disarmed, uh, whether it's knocked out of their grasp, whether they simply drop it, that also costs them a point. Likewise, if they fall for any reason, uh, whether because they uh, simply lose their balance, uh, whether they're shoved or whether they're grappled and thrown to the ground, uh, that will also cost them a point. Pommel strikes are allowed. Uh, buckler strikes to the face are allowed. All for one point. He's looking very focused. He looks, he's looking like a hungry shark in a fish tank. There's a bit of a height difference there. <clears throat> but uh, Thomas is a confident fighter. It'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. Mashe also came second place in a big longsword tournament held in Warsaw Poland this year. He actually took first and second. There were two separate two tournaments separate. here held recently. fighters. Mache and Red moves in very quickly. It looks like he gets a cut on the arm of Blue. And he gets the off the ball as well. But an, an after blow. Oh, and they tussle. See what we get out of that? And no exchange. 
Machi backing Thomas into his corner, dominating the space, which is important here because if he leaves, he loses a point. He leaves the map. Exchange of blows. Thomas catches. After blow on blue. Machi again dominating the ring, taking the center. Oh, they tossed it, they tossed it. It looked like a, an initial thrust by Blue, followed by an exchange of blows, and then a closing. Match takes a point. Queen cut to the leg. Maciej, left-hander, if you hadn't noticed. Thomas fighting with his right hand. Yeah, these guys aren't afraid to wrestle. Blue gets the point. Time out. Appear to have an equipment issue. Bend in the blade. And the fight resumes. Thomas. Oh, and that should be a point for losing his feet. What's he pushed? Did he fall? We'll have to see that in the. to the arm by Blue. Nice cut to the arm by Blue. Cut to the sword arm. Ten seconds left in the bout. And both guys are going at it. Three successive hits by Machie. But it was a judge to double hit. Machie trying to get a second point. And he gets the ball. Looks like we've got Thomas in the back there. See if Thomas got the off the blow. But he gets the hit. Point for Red. So we have a tie, and there is a sudden death. Okay, both guys taking some water now. 30 second break. Matt just going through with his coaches what to do. Thomas also focused. dominating the center of the ring. Thomas in half shield. Looked like a cut to the arm followed by a cut to the head by Machi, but uh, a blowback by Thomas. And there's no time pressure now because it's just to the... To the Sudden death. The first clean hit will decide double this. Hit. Double hit. Another double hit.
double hit, hit again. with a couple of the buckle but, strikes. Uh, unfortunately, this has turned into a little bit of a slogging match. like we see a close and a buckler strike to the face, followed by a fall for Machi. Looks like there may have been a blow on the way in. But the judge, a point for Blue. So there was a close in by Blue, a buckler strike, and that resolves this bout. So we have a third place winner, Blue. Thomas Nieluken of Bergen, Norway, head instructor for the Free Duelists. <clears throat> now we move on to the first place for Sword and Buckler. This fight will take place between Christina Consmo. Christina is uh, a student of Thomas Nilliken, uh, who just won the uh, third place. Uh, she is originally from Arizona in the United States. Now she is living in Oslo, Norway, where she is part of the Free Duelists. Uh, her focus is sword and buckler. This is her first tournament ever, so it's very impressive that she came out of nowhere, uh, defeated a whole series of opponents. Uh, after two years of HEMA with no other martial arts or fencing experience, but 12 years of ballet behind her. On the other side, she fences uh, Stefan Sonnermalm of Karlskoga, Sweden. Uh, he is not actually from the HEMA world. He is a student of Chen Shinobi Jutsu, also an instructor in Judo, an experienced tournament fighter in a variety of martial disciplines. Uh, he has visited Swordfish a number of times. Uh, he's fought in a variety of stick fighting competitions and a variety of other tournaments as well. Uh, he's a, a frequent visitor of Swordfish, and it'll be interesting to see this Asian martial arts practitioner fighting uh, Christina Consmo of the Free Duelists for first place in Buckler. So the fighters come forward and shake hands with each other and with the ref, and the fight will begin. They can return to their corners with Christina having her coach, Thomas Nulikin, fresh from his third place victory in her corner coaching her. Thomas has proved actually a very effective coach throughout this tournament for her, uh, 
getting her vocal assistance throughout her matches, and it's pretty impressive to watch how she listen, listens to her coach, and it served her well. The fight begins. She comes in, changing wards, half shield. Sana Sturm, an unconventional god. I'm sorry, unconventional god. And we see a blow to the wrist. But an after blow. Very tight approach. Very close control of distance. Consmo gets the point. Red by Consmo. Consmo's coach backing out a little bit all the way. Oh, oh beautiful, beautiful hit blow to the head. That head. was a beautiful blow. Oh, oh, oh. Consmo's hurt. And we have. Yeah, this might be bad. She decided to shake it off and it looks like she can continue going. Point Cosmos coach adjusting the glove. And she's ready to go. Ready? <laughs> Sweden versus Norway. Or the United States. Oh yeah, she's playing. <laughs> the Gallas on Team America. Oh. <laughs> Red gets the point. See, Stefan is a big guy. He pushes a lot of punch. Another blow. Oh, beautiful. Cosmos got great distance management. And that was a perfect hit. Perfectly distance. Perfectly timed. Sanamo mixing it up. Exchange. <laughs> Salamam taunting his opponent. Taunting her. Blade or no, I don't think it's broken. It's actually just the the, the cover for it. The tip is right. The tip is off. No, they're changing weapons. So they changed both weapons. So both fighters have identical weapons. <coughs> so obviously there's no advantage on the one side. <coughs> Anticipation of the announcement of the victory. 
just cheering loudly. Yeah, they're going absolutely crazy in here. And Chris Chris Tina Tina Cosmo victory! wins the victory! Cosmo is the winner! Christina has been superb throughout this entire tournament. I have seldom seen better tournament fencing. That was amazing, man. That was truly amazing. Interesting to see how throughout, throughout the event, Thomas, her coach, has been uh, continually telling her what to do, and she paying very close attention to him, following his advice to the letter, and a uh, combination of excellent skills by Christina, great distance management, uh, typically not so much in this as in, uh, as in other events, uh, as in other matches, uh, keeping her opponent at bay with a series of short thrusts and then uh, picking him off with uh, substantial blows uh, to the wrist or to the head. She followed that uh, pattern pretty closely here, doing the same to a much larger opponent. Uh, her uh, opponent, uh, Stefan Sennermalm, of uh, Chen Shinobi Jutsu, a, uh, as I understand, as he has explained, a form of ninjutsu, also an instructor in judo. The other thing I have to say is uh, she is one tough fighter. She took some very hard hits from him on the after blows and still managed to continue throughout the fight. So now, <clears throat> we move on to the next event. We move on to women's longsword. This will be the third place uh, fight again. We have Kit Smith uh, from New Zealand in the blue corner. Uh, Kit Smith has a focus of uh, Fiore longsword and English backsword. She's an experienced competitor. We've seen her here at Swordfish a number of times. Uh, her opponent, uh, in the red corner, also wearing the red gambeson, is Anna Stempian of Gliwice, Poland. Her club is Vector. She has about 15 months of training. Her instructor, an instructor is Marcin Serdel. Um, it's her first tournament, so it's pretty impressive that she's fighting for first place. Her focus is German longsword and Messer. Over to you, Scott. So, some pre-fight formalities taking place, judges conferring. We've got uh, some, some very large national contingents here. We have a very large Polish contingent, of course, plenty of Swedes. We have uh, a very large Dutch showing all in their national colors sitting in the stands. Very nice to see, very entertaining to watch. Kit 
has always impressed me as a fighter. She uh, actually took part today in two tournaments, the women's longsword and the sword and buckler, going back and forth between the two. And, and she was actually fighting two tournaments simultaneously. And managing to place. Both fighters circling each other. A bind, looks like maybe followed by a drawing cut. And it's adjust a double. a double hit. Circling. Get in the center. And no exchange. Judges couldn't agree on what happened. Thrust, followed by, looks like a thrust that was parried, followed by a cut by Blue, losing her helmet, her mask in the process. And the judges, the judge, a double hit. Like a uh, like cut, cut on the wrist. Right. Double hit. Oh. Judged a double hit. <laughs> it looked like a parry, followed by a nice clean cut to the outside by Blue. Point for Blue. Great cut by Kit, very nice. It looked to me like a cut by Red, but no exchange. Both fighters circling each other, finding the distance, finding the tempo. Oh. It looked like a cut by red to the leg, followed by an after blue by blue. Oh, beautiful, clean cut, slip by Kit. Slipped a downwards cut, and Oberhau stepping in with a cut to the head. Beautiful, beautiful point by Kit. Ten seconds left. And it looks like another missed cut by red, followed by a clear cut by blue. Point for blue. Time is called. 30 second break. And we'll begin the second round. After a series of double hits there, uh, not a very clean start to the fight, but Kit seems to be finding her groove and has gotten a series of very clean hits. Yeah, she closed it with a beautiful overhaul to the top of the head. Okay, they look like they're going back in. <clears throat> and the fight begins again, the second round. A little more aggressive now. Cut and a parry. Judges. No Judges not agreeing on the result. Judges. Had a bind no with a double hit. with a double hit by both parties. Yep. Nice.
nice blow by Red, but a failure to defend afterwards took a after blow to the head by Kit. It looked like a blow to the wrist by Red. And that is a blow, a point for Red. Cut to the wrist, to the left wrist by Red. Circling. Kit. After blowing red. And that looks like an after blow. Right. Or, yeah. After blowing red. Another double hit. Oh, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful blow to the head by, by Blue. And she gets the point. Seems to be a tendency here of red taking a strike and missing and uh, blue moving in for the kill. Point blue there. Another point for Kit. Ten seconds, cool. Ten seconds. And the fighters end up in a double hit. Oh, it looked like a... Another point by Blue. Seems pretty clear that the kid has won that. Blue she wins. She takes the victory. All right, so Kit Smith of New Zealand has won third place in the women's long sword finals. Now we go on to first place with a fight being between Christina Nodge of Budapest, Hungary, and Nicole Smith of Vancouver, Canada. Christina Nodge is the defending champion. Uh, she won first place in the women's longsword tournament at Swordfish in 2010, so she is defending her title. She is a formidable fighter. Her focus is German longsword. And she has uh, six years of HEMA under her belt. Nicole Smith, on the other hand, assistant instructor at Blood and Iron Martial Arts in Vancouver, Canada, uh, is fighting actually her first longsword tournament, although she has a few years of rapier fencing under her belt. In her corner is Lee Smith coaching her, Christina Nodge by herself. Christina with significantly more longsword experience, but Nicole has her rapier skills behind her and also a significant height advantage.
So the fighting is about to, get, to begin. Fencers putting on their masks again. Christina Nodge in red defending her title. The winner, first place winner of the women's longsword tournament in uh, Swordfish 2010. Defending her title against Nicole Smith of Vancouver, Canada. Yeah, and Christina is the only, the only fighter in the, in, in, the, in, in the finals that is actually defending a title. The, um... Secretary, are we ready? Ready. ready? And the fight ready. begins. Ready? Fight! <clears throat> Nodge in red. Smith in blue. Early point. And a point for red. Looks like it was a blow on the arm. Very light, though. Two cuts, a bind, and Nodge forced out of bounds. But the judges, the judge, a point for red. I guess you got a cut on the way out of the ring. Two points up for Christina Nodge. But. We just saw a cut on the arm by Blue. Clear point for Blue. 2-1. Christina very aggressive. Came up into a bind, cut around, strike to the head. Left Oberhau on the head of... Yep, left Oberhau on the head of Nicole Smith. This is a very clean fencing fight as well. It's two very good fences. Ooh, nice nice Zverkow by Christina Nodge. Judge is not clear on what, it, what occurred. Christina and Flug. No, no result. We're pretty consistently seeing a, a bind on the inside line following, followed by cuts to the outside line by Christina. Point for red, striking on the arm of blue. Christina and Flug again. Looked like a clean point. From, from Blue. Yeah, and Blue gets the point. Looked like it was a blow to the head by Blue. Oh! Thrust by Smith. And she gets the point. Point for Blue. Thrust, beautiful thrust by Nicole Smith. There was a light, very light blow to the arm before that by Christina Nodge. See a blow on the arm by blue, but an after blow, but an after blow by red. It's very clean fighting. 10 seconds left for this round. Bind. And We'll see how the judges have to say about this. Point to blue. And it Point goes to blue. blue. It looked like there was a bind, an attempt to cut by red, and then it looked like there was a thrust in ox uh, by blue as they separated. Hit Christina in the lower right uh, side, lower right flank. So our bout is paused. We have 30 second break. Christina took an early lead, but it uh, looks like Nicole has uh, done a fantastic job of yeah, trying this, to turn things around. Yeah, this is a pretty tight match. We can only guess who will win. Well, it's interesting to see that Nicole has started to uh, thrust. It'll be interesting. Uh, she seems to be maybe reverting to some of her rapier skills. She landed a beautiful thrust a few moments ago, got her a point. It'll be interesting to see if she does that again. Both fighters exchange Bind on the high line, and nothing done. Frankly, I'm surprised that uh, Nicole is not fencing from a from a guard with a point forward, given her rapier experience. And 
and we see uh, what looked like a blow from red, followed by an after blow from no, that was no exchange. But it was a ruled no exchange by the judges. A bind. And they give it to red. Point for red. I think there was a uh, light cut from the bind there that occurred. And we have a blow, like a blow to the arm by red. There have been a few similar blows like that from Red on Blue before, mm. earlier in this fight. Exploding what might be a weakness in the opponent. Oh, it looked like a beautiful wind by Christina. Went up, up into a high bind, lifted up into ox. Locks it up perfectly and gets the point. Beautiful thrust, beautiful wind. One of the best examples of a wind I've seen in a fight. Oh. Looked like a thrust to the low line by Christina, followed by an after blow to the face. Looks like those rapier skills but are coming out after all there, right? Oh, oh, beautiful. Thrust by Nicole. It looked like a parry by Red, followed by a cut to the head. Absolutely beautiful. Excellent fencing by these two. And they go out the ring. Looked nice. like a bind, followed by <clears throat> a struggle at the blade. Looked like a slice across the neck by Christina, who gets the point. Fantastic fighting by these two. Oh, beautiful hard hit to a temple by Red. And I believe I saw Judge Red. Cut by Red. Ten seconds left in the fight. And a bind followed by oh, they tussle and they a tussle oh, it's and oh, and goes down. Smith oh, on top. oh, an attempt to grapple by Christina and a convincing turnaround by Nicole Smith. Very impressive, wow, ending up on top. Wow, Very action. hard fall for Christina, though. That was a beautiful ending to a good game. Excellent, excellent. Fantastic fight by these two. 10 to 12. Christina, Christina gets nudge. Christina is the Christina champion. Christina for the second year in a row. She successfully defends her title. Long Sword Champion, Women's Long Sword Champion of Swordfish 2010. Christina Nudge of Budapest, Hungary, successfully defends her title. Excellent fight. I got to tell you, there aren't a whole lot of fights that leave me really excited, but that was fantastic from both sides. Excellent, clean fighting, absolutely beautiful. I have to say that one thing, you had the bind there, you had the lift up into ox. Beautiful, beautiful wind, thrust to the throat by Christina Nodge. Excellent fighting. All elements of the fight were there. They were wrestling, binding, cutting. Beautiful, thrusting. beautiful. Absolutely. And I think, Matt, actually, she might be the first female female in a female tournament to win two consecutive Absolutely. tournaments in a, in a I'm, row. I'm not aware of any other female yeah, fencer in HEMA who has done that. Now, we're moving on to the open longsword. So, <clears throat> open longsword, steel longsword, fighting for third place, Axel Peterson versus Carl Rydberg. Axel Peterson, very well known for his string of victories in HEMA tournaments, senior instructor at Gothenburg Historical Fencing School. Recent wins include Swordfish Steel Longsword in 2010, World Wide Open Championship 2010, Festschule America Longsword and Dusak in 2010, Dijon Mixed Weapons in 2009. All of those first place, an impressive string of victories behind Axel Peterson. 
On the other side, Carl Rydberg of Orebro, Sweden, one of the head instructors at the Orebro Association for Historical Fencing. Six years of HEMA, focuses German longsword, took first place in a Belgian-style longsword tournament in Sweden in 2011. He's been done a fantastic job in this tournament. He's got a very big fight on his hands now. So fighting for first place, these two. Over to you, Scott. I'll tell you, Matt, two real monsters have just entered this ring. These guys bring it. <clears throat> Axel has really grown over the past few years from an unknown back in 2008, 2009, coming to the forefront as probably the foremost tournament fighter along with one or two others. He's definitely one of the top two or three fencers in HEMA today. Hasn't made it to the final, hasn't made it to fighting for first place, but that was only because of a super tough fight he had with the one, the yeah. pole, who will be fighting for first place. Here they go. Two excellent fighters. Yeah, Axel was knocked out by... Oh, and the exchange. And it gets violent. Let's see what the judges decide on. Yeah, it goes as a double hit. hit. It was John Kuru... Kodkiewicz that knocked that axle in the tournament. Right. The competition was fierce in this tournament. Fierce. A lot, a lot of top guys. Oh, oh. oh. Cut, bind by Axel. Cut to the outside line. Left Oberhau. Point for Axel Peterson. Axel in the red, red in blue. Oh, oh. Wonderful blow, two hand blow, look to me, by Axel Peterson to the leg, unable to land an after blow. Peterson was went up Ridbury. high, he went up high and then went really low. Faint high, Faint cut, high low. cut low. That's one of your specialties, I, Matt. And, I've, and he pulled it on me before. I've fallen victim to that move from Axel. A thrust Ooh, by Peterson oh. into the bind, looked like a cut around by Rydberg. Should I just declare it? Yes. So, so it looks like it was a thrust by Peterson followed by an after blow by Rydberg, who took a very hard hit. Yeah, it looks like maybe he got a punch to the solar plexus. Yeah, they, uh, they collided pretty hard at the end. Takes a moment to catch his breath. <clears throat> Fight begins. <laughs> Axel is a bull in the ring. Yeah, and he can really bully guys. He will throw guys out of the ring, literally. And we saw that yesterday. Oh, oh, oh. beautiful blow by Blue. Everybody goes to the hands of Peterson. L looked like a thrust. Yes, and beautiful, beautiful. Thrust by Peterson, blocked. Beautiful repost by Blue to the head. This is Cut top to the head. fencing, ladies and gentlemen. This is top fencing. So calm and collected. Axel holding back a little bit more now. Redbird earned some respect. Oh, oh, and the oh, very nice. Cut, parried, and a hanging by Redberg, followed by a followed by a repose. Another point 
by Rydberg. Blue against Peterson. You see how fast these guys are, Matt? They are so fast. Two strong guys. Ooh. Look, oh. Peterson counters. Sparks, Sparks are from flying. the blade. Fire struck from the blade. I saw a hit there, but. Oh, oh, oh another. Cut by Peterson, series of cuts. Perry by Rydberg, cut to the arm. But an after blow by Peterson. Oh, beautiful! Oh. Wow. Series of cuts, parries, followed by a cut by Peterson to the leg. Yeah, Rydberg left his leg out there for a second. Point he exploded, Axel point gets it. Peterson. Peter gets the point. So, the first round, very action-packed. Wow, man, Axel, I've got goosebumps. Yeah, Ax Axel took a, a very early lead, <clears throat> but Rydberg took it back from him. And then it's going back and forth. Very interesting. Rydberg is showing his stuff, holding up against a very top-notch fighter, earning his stripes. Fighters are getting ready again. Quick quarter, speak to the coaches. And they're back in the trenches. You ready? Ready? Fight! Okay, Axel! Axel! Oh! Oh! Beautiful blow by Axel Peterson. to the left side of, uh, of Rydberg. I may be mistaken, but it looks like he repeated the same blow that he did before. He went up yep. high. Oh, 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 beautiful blow by Peterson. Beautiful parry by Peterson of the after blow. Excellent technique wow. by Beautifully Axel Peterson. Performed. Beautifully performed. A cut and a miss by Rydberg, starting to show the pressure. Lost, lost grip on his blade. Oh. Looked like another cut. Yeah. Peterson is, by Peterson. Peterson is obviously finding, exploding like a weakness. It was a left over how, landed on the left side, or on the right side of uh, Rydberg. Oh, and they tussle. And Rydberg loses his blade. Looks like he took a blow to the side, may have been with a flat. And Peterson, inconclusive. Peterson seems to be finding a, an exploit in exploiting a, a, a gap. Rydberg limping from those oh. repeated blows to the leg. Oh. Ooh. Oh, yes, he's definitely found a weakness uh, in Rydberg's yeah, guard. Yeah, yeah. Got him again with a, with a cut to the, to the right side. Axel changing his guard. Cut by Rydberg, parried by Peterson. Nice repost to the left side of Rydberg. Point for Peterson. Rydberg clearly feeling the pressure now. Oh! oh. Axelson. Peterson gets it down on his knees. Looks like it was a blow by Peterson, followed by an after blow by Rydberg. Peterson loses his balance. Yes. After blow on Peterson. Great fight. Oh. But it looks like Peterson has found his mark on Rydberg. So I'll just take it as a double. Hard fight taking a toll on both fighters. Forms starting maybe to slip a little bit. Oh! oh wow. One handed blow to the leg. Beautiful. By Peterson. Just a simple light blow and it just hit its mark. <clears throat> Rydberg. Rydberg clearly has got to do something now if he wants to. Win. Oh, beautiful Ooh. blow on the wrist by Rydberg. But the judges call an after blow. 10 seconds. Reed Baker. Oh, oh, fire from the blade. Fire. fire from the blade. These Encifer blades are fascinating. They, they blow sparks with every big hit. Final blow by yeah. Peterson. Point for red. These Encifer swords, I have to say, are pretty amazing. Looks like we've got a victory for Axel A. Dog Peterson. Axel Peterson Axel wins, wins third place. Peterson is 
Beautiful fight, though. Rydberg gave him a run for his money. Excellent fight. That was a great fight. That was a legendary fight. Now, on to the first place. This is an interesting fight. Um, our fighters, I think this is actually the first time in some time that we've had a non-Swede, non -Swede, two non-Swedes competing for first place in the longsword final at Swordfish. Yeah. We have John Hodkiewicz, otherwise known as John Chodkowski, uh -huh. uh, versus of Gdansk, Poland, versus Bert Hefart of Bruges, Belgium. Both of these guys, pretty fascinating people with interesting stories behind them. Jan Hodkiewicz, head instructor of Festschule Gdansk, a very talented smith. He is the owner of Ensifer's Swords. In fact, he is the smith who made the swords that have been used uh, throughout the longsword tournament. And I've got to say what impresses the heck out of me is that these swords, these two swords, have held up uh, with no breaks, no significant damage, and lots of sparks. Really nice, really impressive. Uh, in addition to all that, uh, Jan is the vice president of FEDER, the Polish uh, National HEMA Federation. He also is an impressive uh, tournament organizer, uh, being a, a driving factor behind the Polish Steel Longsword Tournament, which has been very active in recent years, and you can see him in red. In addition to all that, Jan is an impressive tournament fighter in his own right, with a record of first place wins in five Polish steel longsword tournaments, a very, very tough fighter indeed. You saw what a challenging opponent uh, Axel Peterson was in the last bout. Uh, Jan Hodkiewicz convincingly defeated him yesterday, giving you an idea of his skills as a swordsman. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Jan has taken some pretty hard hits, having taken part in both the saber and the longsword tournaments, has sustained some damage to his right thumb. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it holds up in this. Unfortunately, it's pretty, some pretty tough hits. He's pretty heavily taped. Hopefully that doesn't affect his technique, technique too much. So against this, uh, actually very well known in, uh, in uh, fighter from Poland, uh, we have Bert Hefart. And the interesting thing about Bert is he's uh, on the international HEMA scene, relatively unknown from Bruges, Belgium, but he's very well known inside of Belgium. He is a member of the Guild of St. Michael, AKA the Halbardiers. Uh, fascinating story in Belgium. You have a long tradition of Belgian fencing guilds. Uh, out of, the, out of uh, all the Belgian fencing guilds, you have two which managed to survive the French Revolution, one in Ghent, one in Bruges. The one in Ghent survives to this day. The one in Bruges lasted until 19, 1905, uh, and, and then it, uh, it faded away. Uh, in 2005, uh, Bert's group resurrected that guild uh, and put it back into effect. So since 2005, the Guild of St. Michael lives again in Bruges, and Bert Gefart, uh, Bart, sorry, Bert Hefart, got to pronounce his name correctly, uh, is the current king of the guild. They have resurrected the tradition of Belgian longsword tournaments within their guild, having an annual royal tournament according to traditional Belgian longsword rules. Uh, Bert won the fight by winning 24 consecutive fights in a row. So Bert is the current king of the guild. So it'll be interesting to see how this unknown outside of Belgium fighter will hold up against this skilled Polish fighter. So with that, I'll pass it over to you, Scott. You can say AKA the Halberdiers. You should say AKA the Halberdiers.
Fencers shaking hands, retrieving their long swords, retiring to their corners, donning their masks, and the fight will soon begin. This is it for the championship. First place at stake. In the Swordfish 2011 Open Steel Longsword Tournament. Both these guys have trained very hard and come a very long way to do this. Very, very hungry, two very hungry guys. Polish crowd is cheering for their champion. Thrust, oh, John thrust and a parry. Oh, they, oh, they oh, looks like Jan lost a grip. Took a blow to the head, perhaps. And it is a blow, but a blow for Red. Point for Red, John in the lead. Both very physical guys moving. One handed blow that misses today. and a thrust. Oh. And they end up outside the mat. Bert from Belgium driving Jan from Poland out of the ring. It is a point for Blue. Tied at 1-1. One, one. Two very aggressive fighters here. Good to see. Cut and parry to the wrist by Jan. Bert returns the favor. Sounding each other's defenses out. One-handed blow. One-handed blow by Jan to the left. Lands on the right arm of Bert, Bert Havart. Oh! Looks like we had a blow to the head by Blue. We'll see if the judge, what the judges have to say. Hodkiewicz in red, Havart in blue. Oh! Beautiful thrust to the face. One-handed thrust, one -handed thrust, one -handed thrust to the face, landed by Red. We'll see what the judges and say, and it's point. a point, to, point for Red. Beautiful one-handed thrust to the face by Hodkiewicz. The bind, they bind they stick. off the Looks edge, like John's club got the action caught. is halted. <laughs> Point for blue. I think it was a, uh, a schnitt. Hard to say. Very... Two very hungry fighters here. Both eager to be the first to be the first non-Swedish champion of this tournament for some time since Scott Brown won it in 2008. No exchange. I'll tell you, these are, oh, one-handed one -handed thrust that does not land. It comes through a bind. Grapple by Bert takes Jan down. Convincing show of dominance, it looks to me, by Bert. And we'll see what the judges have to say. Point for blue because of the grapple. Fascinating, very nice blow. Excellent grappling skills by Bert Hayfart. Looks like it was a blow to the hand, perhaps. Blow to the hand by Red. Point Red. Wow. Excellent fight, going back and forth. Two skilled fighters. It's teetering back and forth between these two. Boy, I tell you, these are two fine 20th century swordsmen. They are, dude. They if are. you want to test the medal of a 21st century swordsman, this is the place you come to, come. to Swordfish. Thrust, bind. Oh, oh loss of blade. Oh, back oh, oh, blow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, aggression in the ring. Aggression in the ring. Oh, oh. Oh. Wow. We so had a lot of the testosterone in the ring there, A great Matt. deal of testosterone there. We had, we had a close, a grapple, a loss of blade. We had... Back edge blow over the shoulder to the head by Hodkiewicz, super tough fighter, followed by a grapple by Bert, followed by a turnaround by Jan, and it's adjudged for Red. This is crazy. Fantastic These guys exchange. Are monster. Took, clearly took the wind out of both fighters. Yeah. Amazing yeah. exchange there. But they'd call it 10 seconds, so this looks like they will go to 30 second break right now. Tough, tough fight. These are two excellent fighters. 
I have to say it's... Wow. I'm speechless right I, now. I, this is some real fighting going on in here. I this love is, my Swedish friends at G GHFS, but it's fantastic to see a, this Polish and this Belgian fighter duking it out for first place here yeah, at Swordfish really 2011. Comes, absolutely, and it really comes to show what an international arena this has become. Great fight, teetering back and forth. Neither one of them willing to give up an inch. Jan, Jan has this reputation for being hyper-aggressive. But Bert, not willing to let that deter him. Fantastic fight. Oh, oh one-handed blow, perhaps an after blow by Blue. We'll see so what the judges the say. And the one-hand blow to the inside of the thigh, and it went as a double hit. Oh, oh yeah. it looked like blow to so, the hands. Yeah, Pivot came with the Unterhau, and then John Cannon with a blow to the right. hands. Blow to the hands. And gets the point. By Red. Ooh. Again, blow to the hands. Pairing of the after blow, no after blow landed. Point for Red again. Now, this is an amazing fight for Young considering the damage he sustained to his hands. An amazingly tough fighter. Considering the damage he's taken. Bert himself has also taken some damage. His problems with his wrists. Both of them. Looks like we have another blow to the blow to the wrist or to the hands. Not sure if an after blow landed. We'll see what the judges say. Point for red. Jan gets the point. Another point for Jan. It looks like Jan, <clears throat> Jan is managing to play a distance game. Perhaps favoring his hand, staying out of range, but landing convincing blows on Bert's wrist. Smart move, considering the damage to his wrist. So the, the, ref, the ref broke it because Jean came outside the ring. Jan looked pretty winded by that one grappling exchange. Looks like he may be trying to avoid that kind of exchange. Oh, it looked like we had a bind. Unterhau to the side. We'll see how the judges call that. And no exchange. Cut and miss by Bert. Circling Bert in a low guard. Jan Fomtag on the shoulder. Bert and Alber. Now up to Fomtag over the head. A thrust Ooh. drives Jan from the ring with a thrust and a series of cuts. Right but it looked like Jan parried. Yeah, missed the call on that. Oh, clear cut. Left over how by Bert. Lands on the right shoulder. Oh. The judges call it a point for point for red. No exchange. John going for the one hand below. One hand below misses. We've done a few of those in this fight. Oh, it looks like we have a and thrust. again with the one hand thrust. Yes, but followed by a cut. By blue, rendered as a double hit. Long art thrust to the to the chest by Jan. Cut to cut to the neck by blue. And, and that is it. End of time. That's it. That's End of it. a fantastic fight between these two. Not entirely sure. I think Jan had. Jan was in the lead. We'll see. Excellent fight. Michael Vigren will announce the winner. Big smile on both of their faces. You can see. Both of these yeah. fighters enjoyed this tough, tough fight. Real class and sportsmanship here. Yeah. And Jan Hockiewicz! Jan Hockiewicz is the champion! The Poles are hey, The Poles close in! This is amazing! Jan Hockiewicz, despite the injury to his right hand, managed to pull off a victory against a very, very tough opponent. That Fantastic man, that fight. is perseverance. That guy's hand was swollen. It was like a balloon. Excellent, excellent fight by Jan Hotkiewicz.
But I have to say a fantastic fight also by Bert Hivart of Belgium. Fantastic fight. Couldn't Absolutely. have asked for a better end to this tournament. Absolutely. Two very skilled fighters. Absolutely amazing. Now, Scott, maybe uh, you want to go take a... Yeah, what we'll do get now... Get a couple of comments from these fighters. Are we going to do... Uh, well, we're going to do... We're going to do the goal... The, the, the we're going to do a, a medal ceremony. Yeah, yeah, the medal ceremony. So if you, if you, if you hang in there, guys, and uh, we'll do the medal, right. the medal ceremony momentarily. <clears throat> Now we're about to begin the medal ceremony for the victors of the tournaments at Swordfish 2011. Great series of fights. With the end fights, I have to say my own feeling those last three fights, that stellar fight between Christina Naj of Hungary, pulling off a fantastic victory against Nicole Smith of Canada, that tough, tough fight between Axel Peterson and uh, Carl Rydberg, followed by that climax, fantastic fight. Yeah, what a way to end it. What a way to I, end. I just broke my voice, sing, screaming so high. I lost it, it's gone. By Jan Chodkiewicz of Poland. Fantastic victory by him. Yeah. And this has become a truly international tournament. With guys in, guys in, the, in the finals from America, Belgium, Poland, we had quite a range, quite a range of competitors. Canada, New Zealand. We had uh, other other contestants as well. We had contestants in the longsword tournament from Mexico. As far as Mexico, it's great to see. We had competitors from uh, from Canada, Mexico, and the United States here at this tournament. Yeah, really yeah, fantastic yeah. to see people traveling uh, across the pond to compete at Swordfish 2011, plus people from all corners of Europe. Really, really nice to see. Another nice thing uh, that we've seen during the course of this uh, tournament is, uh, and, and of this event, is some uh, uh, fencing equipment distributors becoming interested in the HEMA arena with companies such as PBT from Hungary, uh, All Star from from Germany and uh, other fencing uh, equipment companies as well becoming interested in starting their lines of HEMA uh, fencing equipment with masks and uh, head protectors that are tailored for HEMA usage, protecting the back of the head. Uh, we're seeing companies developing specialized gauntlets to protect. Uh, we're seeing fencing jackets that are being specially modified for use in HEMA tournaments. Really, really nice to see. And as well, what it, what's also nice is to see the, the leading role that uh, HEMA instructors and HEMA fighters are taking in developing uh, this gear. Uh, Jan Hotkiewicz, in particular, I have to single out as an individual who, in addition to being a fantastic fighter, as you just saw, also a first-rate smith who made these Ensifer swords that held up so well, not a single break in this longsword tournament, something we've not seen uh, in prior steel tournaments. But uh, the other thing, too, is uh, Jan also has developed uh, a design for, uh, yep, for, a, for a gauntlet that yep. has also turned out to be very protective. Yeah, so very much a pioneer in Poland. Uh, John is, uh, he's and, created and outside some of, of safe, Poland. Yeah, he's and outside of Poland. He's, created some of the, he's helped create some of the safest, uh, safest protection equipment there is out there for steel <clears> tournaments. Of course, when you have steel tournaments, you also have new requirements on what, what, to, what protections to wear as compared to nylon tournaments or shitmite tournaments.
So we're also very happy. Uh, there have been a few minor injuries, of course, as we expect in any, any tournament. Uh, but I have to say that uh, considering that uh, all these tournaments were with steel, uh, we had uh, a, a small number of hand injuries, uh, a couple of broken fingers, yeah, I believe, I we had but two, no, maybe three broken no fingers. severe injuries, and I don't believe we had a single broken blade. Yeah, no, not one. And as, uh, as to repeat that, what happened to Ilka, it was an old wound. So when he, when he rolled around now on the mat, he, he, he hit it open again. The, right. the old wound spit open again. So although that looked, uh, I don't know if that showed on the camera. He I had think a, it did, and it looked he pretty had, gruesome. He uh, looked pretty gruesome, <laughs> uh, especially since Ilka is blonde. The blood uh, made quite a nice show on his head. A uh, little bit of display of gore for the crowd. But uh, not from an injury sustained, actually, in the fight, of course, but from... That uh, roll he made afterwards, I guess he hit his head on the inside of his mask, uh, cutting up an, o an old wound, and that was where the blood came from. I have to say, uh, the, the match that uh, had my heart pumping was the match between uh, Christina Consmo, who is the most amazing fighter I've seen to come out of the blue, uh, fighting against uh, a field of... of uh, of both male, mainly male, but also female competitors, including Kit, who we saw fighting the longsword, a uh, fantastic opponent in her own right, uh, but doing a fantastic job of uh, taking on these opponents and rising to the top of a mostly male uh, tournament and uh, taking out uh, convincingly uh, an opponent who is much larger than she was. Yep, absolutely. Uh, this. Uh, the Swedish ninja, I think, as some yeah, people Stefan sometimes Sanibar. call him. It was a very dramatic game, especially looking in that <clears throat> Stefan, he represents the Eastern, Eastern martial arts, and Christina representing, representing the Western, the Western uh, martial arts. arts. Over to Nicholas, our friend in the ring.
is also rewarded with a water bottle from Leon Paul. Please step up, Thomas.
Um, we have one, one, to fight, one last competition to give our prizes for. Um, this will be given.